the rising action, where you get to know the setting, and you get to know the motivations behind the main plot. And so this second part of the poem is called Rising Actions. Born with a name, date, and place, arms slipping towards a light not known, yet only in grasping the surrounding air can I lift myself from perdition, catapulting from a darkness so total and intimate that blood and water spurt from my chest onto the ground where I take the first step, conceiving a plan that will pierce consciousness. A gigantic cry for breath, causing every eye to gaze in joyous wonder at the miracle of momentary death. Ideas last eons, but lives are lost in seconds. Now, after the rising action, after you've met the characters and you've built up the story, the plot behind their interactions with each other, comes the climax, the great event of the whole story, like where everything comes crashing down or succeeds. And so this part of the poem is called Climax. The pinnacle of tongues shining clear as ice on a spring morning where crystal towers crumble causing earthquakes to announce the babble of bright music caught blowing through my ears like a sonic hurricane. Enchantment, entrancing constant courses of melody to drip, drip, drip into my arm like an IV of symphonic morphine, my addiction to this image, living in a fantasy of perfect reality will be my downfall. And though, after the climax, comes a day in the mall, which is the opposite of the rising action. It is a, sort of an ending, but it all, doesn't have to be an ending. People will get to the end, and every great story you want to hear more you want to go on for more and so the last part of this poem is called denouement age is a powerful bulldozer that levels every monument we build to achievement every action lost in the triumphant past is swallowed whole when we turn our heads to the bleak future we share with every tree eagle and star but what if we turned time upside down? The hourglass becomes a swirling vortex of possibility, each trickle of sand a new chance to become a new electron in the atomic galaxy of existence. If only death could throw back her shroud to show her lovely countenance to the world so we could herald her like the beauteous dawn, she is the light that casts the shadow of life. So now I begin. Okay, so the rest, the rest of my poems, I, 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 I memorize. So I won't, I won't be reading. So hopefully it'll be a little bit more interactive. But um, this this poem is one I wrote when I was turning twenty, which really wasn't too long ago. <laughs> but it it made me think. It made me think about what my, my father had tried, tried to teach me as I was growing up, like what it takes to grow into a man from a boy. And it also works for women too, like from a girl into a woman as well. And so the title of this poem is called Crucible. And what a crucible is, is a furnace. Uh, if you're a blacksmith, you will use the crucible to shape the metal that you are working with. You put it in, and you take it out, you hammer it, and if you're making like a sword, you, you shape it into a sword. And so everybody, I feel, has a moment in your life where they want to form who they are and become that sword <laughs> to carry the metaphor through. So this poem is called The Crucible. What happens when a child's eyes no longer watch with wild surprise the shoulders of titans lifting the skies, their heads held high and strong and true. Tell me, what then is a boy supposed to do? 
Does he think in terror that the sky so blue will crash straight down in smoldering flames to torch the world in smoky trains of bright brimstone? Who is to blame if the pillars of man fall and burn while the child alone is left to learn how the axis of the earth can yet still turn as if nothing had collapsed upon its surface? The human race and all of its purpose cannot provide a single service to save the child's eyes from dulling. His face will sallow, wrinkle, and sully, oh, cruel casualty of his calling. Chosen, above all, to become a man, yet without the choice to stay his hand from the wars that ravage the land with vicious winds, with chair terrain. He must learn to erase the stain like a saw grinding against the grain. Growing tall so as to arm the trees who brace their backs against the breeze of smoggy progress choking their leaves that gather light for those who take none even as great fires mask the sun. He learns at last what must be done, what his father had known and held till death and whispered low in his late breath. Innocence lives and must protect the joy of false reality until shattered by the eventuality that everyone must face their own mortality. Resolve will form then upon his brow. How could he be blind to all but now and pausing? As long as his strength allows, he pushes the black back into blue with the wisdom that not even Atlas knew. Men and women were once children that grew too tall for this world and shattered the dome surrounding the planet that they once called home and journeyed out into the unknown, leaving their children to wonder why. The giants who once carried the skies had left them alone in life to die.